Hey everybody, welcome back to Those Fake Nerds. I'm Brian Marr. Will Sony or Microsoft come out on top of this generation? I'm not really sure, but they're both taking very interesting approaches. So let's get into that. Sony and Microsoft have been trading blows back and forth over the past three generations, with Sony's PlayStation 2 outselling Microsoft's original Xbox during the seventh generation, only to have Microsoft turn things around in generation eight with the Xbox 360. Granted, by the time the dust settled, Sony was able to pick up momentum and actually pass the 360 in total unit sales. However, I do believe Microsoft won in terms of mindshare with the 360. In 2013, Microsoft had a legendarily bad performance at E3 by focusing on the entertainment options such as TV and presenting strange new restrictions for sharing games for their new console. A blunder that Sony was more than happy to pounce on with their own showcase, which combined with the momentum from the end of the last generation, set them on a path for total domination of generation eight. Microsoft did themselves no favors, releasing disappointing entries in their Gears of War and Halo series, a shortcoming exacerbated by Sony releasing hits such as Horizon Zero Dawn, the God of War reboot, among many others. So this brings us to the current generation, generation nine. The way these two companies are approaching it couldn't be any more different. Sony is looking to continue their dominance by offering their players critically beloved games. A fact that led to Sony rejecting a pitch by Bend Studios for a sequel to their 2019 game, Days Gone, as reported by Bloomberg, which prompted John Garvin, the lead producer on Days Gone, to say in an appearance on God of War creator David Jaffe's YouTube channel, quote, I do have an opinion on something that your audience may find of interest, and it may piss some of them off. If you love a game, buy it at full fucking price. I can't tell you how many times I've seen gamers say, yeah, I got that on sale. I got that through PS Plus, whatever. So to put it simply, Sony only wants the cream of the crop. Games that will have critics singing their praises on blogs, YouTube videos, and from the rooftops. You know, if, if people actually do that. Microsoft, on the other hand, is leveraging their considerable capital to lock down studios such as Bethesda by purchasing their parent company, Zenimax Media, for $7.5 billion. However, that plan doesn't seem to be to only have Bethesda make exclusives for them, but instead to use their roster of games to bolster the offerings on Microsoft's Game Pass subscription service. In fact, most of Microsoft's focus seems to be on their Game Pass offer. In the past month, they have negotiated with Square Enix and MLB to get Outriders and MLB The Show on their service upon release, which check out our previous video to see why the show coming to Xbox Game Pass is so wild. So while Sony is focused on quality, Microsoft is trying to provide value through quantity. It's true that even in the ninth generation, Sony is leading the way in exclusives with games such as the remake of Demon's Souls and the shortly coming Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, but Microsoft has turned Game Pass into probably the greatest value in gaming. So which approach is better? It's probably no surprise that Sony has been able to parlay their eighth generation success into early success in the ninth generation. According to the MPD Group, which is an American market research company, the PlayStation 5 is the fastest selling console in units and dollar amounts in United States history. How many of those units have gone to scalpers who are still listing the consoles on eBay for ridiculous markups? That's difficult to say. Seriously, I, I can't believe we're still dealing with that. While there's no doubt that the Series X and S are behind in console sales, Microsoft has some impressive numbers to tout themselves. As of an April 20th, 2021 earnings call, Xbox Game Pass has surpassed 23 million subscribers between the Xbox One and its various versions, the Series X and S, as well as PC. I know I personally subscribe to Game Pass Ultimate, which allows me to access games on my Xbox One and my PC. Each strategy has led to financial success for their respective companies. It will come down to how aggressive Microsoft continues to be in courting third-party games to their service, and if they're able to actually produce high-quality first-party games that players simply can't get on PlayStation. For Sony, I truly believe they need to look into creating a competing service for their console. Sony has shown that they're able to pivot by offering games like Horizon Zero Dawn and Death Stranding on PC. However, they've been reluctant to fully commit when it comes to things like backwards compatibility, a function that has proved to be a huge selling point for Game Pass. In fact, recently Sony suffered a large backlash when they announced they would be shutting down the Vita and PlayStation 3 stores. This backlash caused the company to backtrack on their plans. Sony does offer PlayStation Plus, which allows players to access older games, with the caveat that you'll need to stream most titles. Something that, unless you have an extremely fast and reliable internet connection, doesn't work so well. This is all to say that perhaps Sony can pivot once again and turn PlayStation Plus into the answer to Game Pass. Will Sony make these moves, or are they going to stubbornly stick with what worked for the 8th generation? Better yet, will Microsoft be able to right the ship and begin offering premium exclusive titles on their Game Pass? 
Or is this all for naught? Will Sony simply be able to just carry the momentum from last generation through another generation? We shall see. But I like that both companies seem to be fighting hard because with the competition, the real winners are us, the consumers. So let me know your thoughts on who's gonna win the generation in the comments section down below. Please be civil. I know uh, stuff like this can get a little heated, but uh, don't do that, please. All right, I'm Brian Marr, I'm a fake nerd. This has been some real news. If you liked this, check out our channel, maybe hit the like button and subscribe. We got a lot of videos like this coming out soon. And we have a lot of sketches, streams, all that kind of stuff already on the channel. Um, you can follow our podcast channel. It's uh, Better Radio. You can follow our sports-based channel, Wicked Good Sports. Uh, the channel, of course, is Wicked Good Everything here. We're on Twitter, at WG Everything, on Instagram, at Wicked Good Everything, and on Twitch, at twitch.tv slash Wicked Good Everything. Am I forgetting anything? Yes, TikTok. Follow us on TikTok for sketches and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we will see you in the next one.